Hello, this is Jen Francis, and I'm here to give some homework help using the Harris-Benedict equation and Mifflin-St. Georg equation. In your homework this week, you'll be asked to calculate calorie needs or energy needs for a patient using both of these formulas. They're very simple, meaning that you just need to plug in uh, some numbers into a formula and do the math. However, I've seen a lot of common student mistakes, so this is to kind of go over a way to do it carefully and minimize mistakes. We'll start with the Harris-Benedict equation. Here's the Harris-Benedict equation for men. Here's the Harris-Benedict equation for women. Two things that you need to notice is number one, you have to use a different equation for men and women just because there's different amounts of metabolically active tissue in men and women's bodies even if they were the same height and weight and age. The second thing you need to notice is that weight needs to be in kilograms and height needs to be in centimeters. These equations are written down in your textbook, so you don't need to write them down while you're listening to this. Okay, first we're going to practice the Harris-Benedict equation. We're going to use a 50-year-old male patient who weighs 170 pounds and is 5 foot 8 inches tall. The first thing that we need to do is to convert height and weight to metric. To convert the weight to metric, we take 170 pounds divided by 2.2 to equal 73.3 kilograms. For the height, remember that 5 feet is 60 inches, so 60 plus 8 equals 68 inches. 68 inches times 2.54 converts to 172.7 centimeters. Uh, as I'm doing the equations, I'm going to round this off to 173. Okay, so we're going to plug those numbers into the formula. The resting metabolic rate, you may also see this as BMR either way, for men is 66.5, etc., etc., etc. This is just the formula with the weight in kilograms plugged in and the height in centimeters plugged in and the age plugged in. Okay, then you do the multiplication. I find the best way to minimize mistakes is to write it out for each step. So as you can see here, I've written out the formula with the numbers plugged in. Then I write out the formula with the multiplication done out. So 13.75 times 77.3 is equal to 1,063. 5.003 times 172.7 is equal to 864. 6.755 times 50 is equal to 338. Okay, so you can see how I multiplied those numbers out and rewrote the formula with the numbers multiplied out. And then I just added and subtracted to get a resting metabolic rate of 1656 calories. Now, remember, that is the resting metabolic rate. That is just the energy required for the activities of of basic life, breathing, heart beating, laying down, not doing any activity. If you were just calculating energy needs for a normal healthy person in their everyday life, you would multiply then times an activity rate. But if you are working with patients who have had an injury or illness, rather than multiply times an activity rate, you multiply times an injury or illness factor. And these are going to be different for every uh, condition that you treat. Somebody with um, burns over their skin is going to require energy for healing for that. Somebody with um, broken leg or something like that is going to have a different amount of um, energy required to recover. So usually in a problem in the homework the number would be given to you, the injury or illness factor. So in our example let's just say the injury or illness factor is 1.20. Okay, so the patient's uh, resting metabolic rate times the injury or illness factor equals the total energy um, estimate, estimated energy, sorry, of 1,987, about 2,000 calories. Now, this may not seem like a lot for a 5 foot 8 male. But you need to remember that we're looking at someone who is 50 years old and remember that energy requirements decrease with every decade of age. So remember that number, 1,987.
click, click, click to get to the next slide. Okay, now we're going to do the Mifflin St. Gior. It looks very similar, but if you compare to the Harris Benedict, it's just different numbers in here to multiply the weight and height and age times. So that's the one for men. This is the one for women. Very similar. Okay, we're going to use the same patient so we can compare the number of calories that we got for using the Harris Benedict versus the number of calories we got versus the Mifflin St. Gior. Okay, just as a refresher, he is 50 years old, weighs 170 pounds, 5 foot 8 inches. We convert his height and weight to metric to get 77.3 kilograms and 173 centimeters. That should always be the first step. Okay, now we're just going to plug into the formula. This is the formula for a male for Mifflin St. Gior. Okay, then we plug in the numbers. We put in his weight in kilograms his height in centimeters and his age, then multiply out. 9.99 times 77.3 is 772, etc., etc., etc. With this equation, the resting metabolic rate comes out to 1,612. Again, the tips that I want to give at this point is to minimize mistakes by writing out the equation for each step. Once you've got the resting metabolic rate, the same as the Harris Benedict, you're going to multiply times an injury or illness factor. In this case, again, we used 1.2. So the total estimated energy requirements are 1,934. Very, very similar to what we got with the Harris Benedict equation. Different institutions are going to have a culture that uses either the Harris Benedict or the Mifflin St. Gior or uh, a different formula altogether. You just need to use the formula that they're used to using in the in the setting that you're in. Um, that's all the tips I have for you. I guess to summarize, make sure you're using the right formula. Make sure you're converting to kilograms and centimeters. Make sure that you write out each step of the equation. This also helps your instructor if you made a mistake and they see that you've done all of the steps right but maybe got one of the just a simple math mistake they might give you partial credit but we can't tell if you don't show us your work um, also it's easier for you to go back and see where you went wrong and then don't forget to multiply for total energy estimation you're going to want to multiply times that injury or illness factor hope this helps study hard